Welcome to Morning Prayers on Boxing Day. Yes, Boxing Day 2023. Here we are. And yes, this is not live. It is recorded. I am on leave, but I'm at home. But I did think it was important to give those who would really feel the benefit of it just an opportunity to keep us centred in prayer and reflection. And today I would like us to take a look at the Christmas message from the President and Vice President of Conference. We'll listen to that and then that will lead us into a time of prayer together. Look at yourself. Where do you see the divine spark reflected back at you? What does it feel like, I wonder, to be invited to do this? To see yourself as precious in God's sight, someone whom God has gifted gifts, skills and talents to share with others. Actually, Kerry and I have found that a very difficult thing to do ourselves. We didn't know each other before we were elected as president and vice president earlier this year. And as we've got to know each other a little better over the course of these months, we've discovered that both of us, like many other people, suffer from what we call imposter syndrome. We look at ourselves and we don't recognize that we have anything much to offer. We look at ourselves and we don't see any treasure. We look at ourselves and we see all the things that are wrong about us, all the things that we don't like about us, or all the things that other people could do much better than we can. As we have traveled around the connection over the last few months, we have noticed that lots of us don't recognize ourselves as treasure. We don't think our story is of value. We don't think we are of value. And we wonder, how can God possibly use us? In the Christmas story, the shepherds probably thought of themselves as nothing people. They were on the edge of society, looked down on by some, but God chose them to be part of God's story, a story told from generation to generation a reminder to all of us to see the divine spark in ourselves. You won't always know the impact you have on others. Just occasionally though, we get encouragement from someone who tells us that something we have done, perhaps something ordinary, something we don't think anything of doing, has made a difference to them. Just before the conference earlier this year, I received a really encouraging message from someone alongside whom I had studied over 25 years ago. Every week, following their work alongside those on the edges of our society, those that perhaps many of us think of as nothing people, I sat with them to eat a meal and hear about their experiences in that work. Unbeknown to me, Others had refused to sit alongside them because of where they'd been and who they'd mixed with. I did something very simple and ordinary, sitting, listening, eating. But to them, it had meant a great deal and had been an extraordinary experience. Look at the people around you. Where do you notice the divine reflected back at you? Sometimes God speaks to us through others, and that affirmation from others can help us see and understand our own gifts and to understand more about God. In the Christmas story, Mary would undoubtedly have been having a difficult and confusing time. But when she meets her cousin, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby leaps within her in recognition of the divine the baby that Mary was carrying in her womb. Elizabeth shared her experience and offered affirmation to Mary. She recognized the treasure within Mary. I wonder how we can create opportunities to really notice the people around us, the people in our church, in our community, to really listen to one another's stories and to help each other see that we are treasure. What's getting in the way of us doing that more? 
We need to make space, sift our diaries, to be able to spot the hidden treasure. We have been so encouraged by people who have shared with us their creativity through art and crafts, through songs and testimonies and words of encouragement. We have heard people share their own sense of call and vocation to where they are serving. And as Jill and I have done these things, we've talked with others about often very deep and difficult life experiences and how we've found the divine, the treasure, despite the pain. Look at the world around you. Where do you see glimmers of the divine there? Our final encouragement to you is to seek and find treasure in the world and the community around us. The hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, seems particularly poignant this year. All that happened in that town 2,000 years ago and all that's happening in that part of the world now sadly remind us that nothing much has changed. We are still caught up in conflict and challenge, fear and uncertainty. Israel-Palestine is particularly on our minds and our hearts. God is still present, even in the most difficult places. In the Christmas story, there is evidence of terror, jealousy, hatred and barbaric behaviour. Jesus and his family fled for their lives, seeking refuge. And yet the divine story unfolded in the midst of all that. And in our communities today, the same extraordinary things are happening. Treasure is being found amongst the ordinary activities of life. So, how will you make space yourself, with your family, with your church, or with your community this Christmas to discover the extraordinary amongst the ordinary? We wish you all a peaceful, joyful, an extraordinary Christmas. Our Lord Emmanuel. Which obviously prompts us in our prayers. I made some notes as I listened uh, to um, a president and vice president's message to us. Let's pray. Much in there about imposter syndrome, recognising the treasure that is in ourselves, having that opportunity to be alert to the times when we've done something ordinary in our own eyes that has extraordinarily changed the lives of others. That memory that we live in a world where some people are going through acute difficulties, but Christmas is a time that as well as being filled with joy is actually taking place against a backdrop of terror and yet God's plan continues to unfold. Let us pray. Lord, we recognise that many of us live with imposter syndrome. We fail to recognise the gifts and strengths that are in us it often takes others to point that out to us. Lord, as we deal with our insecurities, as we journey through life, its trials, its tribulations, as well as its joy, help us to see you and help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to understand that there are gifts in us that we don't even realise that we consider ordinary, but in fact are extraordinary. Draw our attention and help us to be alert to those times when we have made a difference to other people's lives. Help us to grow in our confidence, Lord. We acknowledge in this season of Advent and Christmas and through to Epiphany, that 
you choose those to be bearers of good news who so often are looked down upon by others. We remember those today who were looked down upon, who were undervalued. And I encourage you to add your prayers to the comments section. Think today particularly about healthcare workers and workers in care homes who in many respects are carrying out ordinary jobs but doing extraordinary things, making an extraordinary difference. And I think about the imbalance that's in the world. We pray for our NHS. We pray for our teachers. We pray for workers in care homes. We pray for ordinary people who do extraordinary things. Lord, help us in our daily living to be like Elizabeth to Mary. Elizabeth, who'd seen something of life, could see even more of the joys and delights that would come to Mary. And yet offers also, therefore, that sense of stability and encouragement. We pray as we picture them. We pray for those who need our encouragement this day. We pray particularly for those who are facing trauma and difficulty. We pray indeed also for the people of Palestine and Ukraine. And finally, Lord. As we gather in this space, we pray that you'd help us make space in our own diaries so that we can actually survey the horizon, reflect and can spot the treasure that would otherwise be hidden. We thank you for our churches and the communities from which we come, for the treasures that are there. And as we remember the greatest gift that you gave to the world in Jesus Christ, your son, we pray that we would respond and question what it is that you are asking us to give back to you. We give so much thanks for those times when we hear people sharing a sense of call and vocation. And help us to do that in our own conversations, in our own ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. And as, be as has become our tradition on live stream prayers, I conclude by saying the Lord's Prayer. But I'll just say the first line and then I invite you to respond with the remainder. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Amen, folks. It's been lovely to be with you. Peace be with you today as we journey through this Christmas week. Take care. Stay safe.